All right, you guys, today we are going to play a little game of same but different. are having an amazing day. My name is Quintavious Oliver and I know I've been gone for about a month now, but this whole pretending to be a responsible adult or whatever thing, uh, yeah, I needed a vacation. So I went to the beach, had a good time, and I will make a video about the pictures that I made down there maybe next week. But for right now, because my time is short with this beautiful thing, uh, we're going to talk about panoramic cameras today. Before we get into that, I'm going to ask you guys to give this video a thumbs up smash that subscribe button it's those two little things right there that really help move this channel along i know i keep saying that at the beginning of every video but it is imperative that you guys subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up if you want to keep seeing content like this it really does help this channel out and i've realized that most of you guys aren't actually subscribed so go ahead and correct that issue right now i'll give you a couple seconds to do that and now we're going to address the elephant in the room and i'm talking about this guy right here this is the Hasselblad X-Pan. I know it says Hasselblad right there. This is actually a Fujifilm camera. Fujifilm made and manufactured this camera uh, alongside this. And the Fujifilm version was only sold in Japan. It was called the Fuji TX-1. Not to be confused with the Fuji X-T1, the digital camera that came out more recently. Uh, these are all panoramic cameras. Now there is a second version, the Hasselblad X-Pan 2, but essentially they all do the same thing. Uh, and that's give you these beautiful medium format-esque panoramic cameras on 35 millimeter film. So instead of getting a 24 by 36 frame, you actually get, I think, a 24 by 65 millimeter frame, if I'm not mistaken, and that is enormous. The negatives that come out of this thing are absolutely spectacular, and they really do lend themselves to a niche market. Uh, I've photographed a couple of backdrops for films with this camera. I've done some very cinematic-esque scenes with this camera, and I've tried to photograph a couple of models, uh, but this camera is not something that I can, or I think anyone should, try to shoot like a Leica camera, even though it is a rangefinder and operates much in the same way. And while I say it does act and operate a lot like a Leica M film camera, it's really just in the way of using a rangefinder. Other than that, this thing actually comes with a host of very cool electronic features like aperture priority, auto winding, exposure compensation, a self timer, continuous shooting. Uh, it comes with a spectacular meter and this DX code reader right here. You also get this cool screen on the back that gives you your ISO readout and a couple of other cool details, but it's not something that I find myself looking at a whole lot because the view through this viewfinder is just so cool. Uh, you can actually change it to shoot regular two by three or 24 by 36 frames, but why would you spend $5,000 on a panoramic camera just to shoot normal pictures? Now today I've actually got the 45 millimeter F4 lens on here. And I've been enjoying this lens a lot. It is extremely sharp, it's extremely versatile, especially for a panoramic niche camera like this. Although if I were to spend my money on this thing, I'm pretty sure I would use the 30 millimeter F 5.6. I think it gives a little more of a dramatic cinematic effect. There's also a 90 millimeter lens that can be put onto this camera, which I don't quite care for. I think it kind of takes away from that cinematic drama, but if you've got one, kudos to you, you've got deeper pockets than I do. Now this camera, outside of its just general cool factor, does have a use, especially if you are in the film industry or you're a landscape photographer. I think if you're a unit stills photographer and you really wanna get that cinematic view without having to crop or anything like that, this is the camera for you. Although you're gonna have to use a blimp because the winder on this thing is pretty loud. If you are a landscape photographer who likes to use film, I'm pretty sure you've already heard of this camera or it's bigger brother, the Fuji GF617, which makes massive, 
medium format negatives, and I wish I had one of those in my hands right now. Uh, Fujifilm, if you're listening, go ahead and send one of those my way. Now, I know I'm sitting here going on and on and on about this camera, but it is just that type of cool. That being said, I've had this little guy for about 10 years now. And this is the Lomography Sprocket Rocket. And I know it's kind of a weird name, and it's a little cheap plastic camera, where this one comes in at around $5,000. The little Lomography camera is about $70, and it does pretty much the same thing. It is not nearly as sharp, it doesn't give you any electronic features, but what it does give you is beautiful panoramic negatives, just like the Hasselblad X-Pan. And I say just like, because in that form factor, yeah, you get the same thing. But this thing actually goes a little bit further and projects the negative on the entire strip of film, sprockets and all, hence the name, Sprocket Rocket. Now you do have a mask that you can put into the back of this camera and get standard, uh, standard. 24 by 65 millimeter negatives. But what's the fun in having a sprocket rocket if you're not getting the entire photograph? And I think that's really the point of this camera. It's really just a good time. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, you don't get any electronic features with this. You get one shutter speed, one one hundredth of a second. You get two apertures, F10.8 and I think F16, and you get a fixed 30 millimeter lens. And this 30 millimeter lens does allow you to get pretty close and give you a lot of drama. And I think that's really where this camera shines. I've made some pictures with this thing in the past and actually published a book not too long ago called Plastic. And I can't show you the cover because YouTube sensors and all that stuff. But I did make some pictures that look like this on this camera. Let's see if I can find another one that YouTube won't get upset about. Here's another one that I did. There's the one on the back that I'm pretty sure YouTube might still be upset about. Um, but anyway, this camera is a lot of fun. And I think that's one reason why I've always loved Lomography's little plastic cameras. Along with this one, I've really enjoyed using the Lomo LCA and the Diana F cameras. Now, if you're gonna use a camera like either one of these, you've gotta scan the film just right. And that's where something like this comes in. It's the Lomography Digitalize it. And disclaimer, Lomography is not sponsoring any of this stuff. I just really like their stuff. This thing right here actually allows you to scan the entire strip of film. So if you are doing panoramic pictures, you don't have to do any weird masking or anything like that on a flatbed scanner. This thing right here actually allows you to get the entire strip of film. And that's the sprockets and all this. The film designation, that's all the printing on the side. That's how you're able to get that cool film strip effect that a lot of people are trying to emulate now on Instagram. If you wanna do the real thing, this is how you do it. Now, both of these cameras are very niche cameras. Both of them are for people who really enjoy the idea of having a cinematic panorama effect. And I don't think either one of these would be great for everyday use. But if you wanna make huge prints, throw them up on a gallery wall, or really impress your friends on Instagram with having that swipe, 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 swipe of the same photograph and just kind of building that drama as you scroll through that singular picture. I think these are really cool tools. That being said, I really don't see myself spending $5,000 on a single camera and single lens that I can only make panoramic pictures with. Like I said, this thing does give you the option of making regular 35 millimeter negatives, but again, why would you do that? This thing does something that almost no other camera does does and does it extremely well. So I don't really see the point in dulling down its magic and making it something that it isn't. Uh, this camera really is something to behold. And if you get the chance to try one of these things out, absolutely do it. And I strongly suggest instead of trying to make pictures like a normal camera or like a like a camera, as most people do like in this too, uh, being a rangefinder, I think trying to see things more cinematically, almost like you're looking at the world like a movie, like everything around you is, is seen in and of itself. And I think that's one way to really capitalize off of the niche that this camera lends itself to. And if you wanna have a little bit more fun and you're a little bit more carefree, use something like this, throw a flash on top, have some fun with your friends, make some cool pictures with some of the effects that Lomography films and other specialty films will give you. I think this lends itself more to the creative person, somebody who just isn't really impressed by technical specifications and numbers and dials and switches. This really does feel like an old school analog camera and that's because it pretty much is uh, with just the two dials at the top that you get to spin when advancing or rewinding your film and the little switch on the side for the shutter release. 
this thing is just really cool. And uh, if you break it, you don't feel that bad. It's not like carrying around a $5,000 piece of equipment. Anyway, I'm gonna go out and use my last couple of rolls of film with these cameras while I've still got this little guy. And uh, little guy, this thing is huge and heavy. But if you've got any other questions about the Hasselblad X-Pan or the Lomography Sprocket Rocket, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what type of panoramic pictures you guys are making. If you've got one of these cameras, I'd love to see your work with it. So I'm always inspired by the stuff that you guys show me both here and on Instagram. I really appreciate you guys. Again, make sure you hit that like and the subscribe buttons. I will see you guys next week. Take care, stay safe, stay sane, peace.